perhaps one of the mistakes was I was, I've always tried to run Take Flight as more of a corporate, from like a corporate vision and a scalability vision. And you're advocating a grassroots movement type vision, right? Yeah. If you want to go to feel involved in the community of Palo Sure. This community, like when I was young, it was just groups of people scattered all over the place, you know, for best. Now I've come back to it since 2002 to two, uh, yeah, 2020, 2023. I've, I now know people in every city in England because of Park Law, because it's now a community. So you're trying to run a corporate business, the community's going to be like, nah. But if you show yourself as a community member, they're going to be jump on. We're going to be more inclined to be like, I want to support him because he's a community member at Park Law not someone who did park all and is now trying to make money off it. Sure, sure. Oh, I think your ideas are great. I'm going to tell you uh, an interesting story because I, I think, when I think back, this you're causing me to have a lot of different ideas and thoughts. And one thought is, well, why didn't I do this? And so I have an answer for that question. And uh, it brings us to today. So what's interesting is that my first company wasn't Take Flight. It was a company called Revolution Parkour. It's a parkour gym. And it was one of the first parkour gyms in the country. And I think when I opened it, our own facility in 2010, I think it was the biggest in the country. And now, of course, it's it's daunted by by dozens of gyms. But for the time, it was it was this interesting, like, innovative theory because parkour gyms were not common back then. So I started this company. Then I started Take Flight. And then in 2011, I had the chance to move to France to work with David Bell. So I said... I can't be in France working with David and run Take Flight and run a parkour gym remotely. There was too much on my plate and nothing had reached a financial level where I could hire people and put it in place. So at that time when I'm running the gym, I'm building a community, actively involved in teaching. And for three years, I'm building this really ardent, strong community. And that community was so strong that I think I had five students go on and start their own gyms. So it started this fire in Portland, which is why Portland is in some ways a parkour hub in the sense of the number of gyms we have. Um, that being said, once I, so I'm moving to France and I'm realizing I can't do all three of these things. And my heart was, I want to work with David because he was my idol and he was the person I wanted to learn from. Yeah. And be, way, more important, way more important to me than revolution parkour or take flight. So I can't do all three. I decided to sell the gym. So I, I pretty much gave the gym away, but I technically sold it. Passed it on to somebody else, moved to France. Hired a manager to do some stuff for me for Take Flight. So now I'm running Take Flight remotely. And what I realized very quickly was that the guy I hired, who was great, he's a friend of mine, was the first person I did parkour with. Cool guy. To this day, I love him. Um, he didn't have the experience or the initiative or the wisdom, some combination thereof, to run the company on his own. I had to run it. So... I would spend, this was very common. I would spend all day with David. Then I would come home and work till three or four in the morning doing take flight stuff, ordering products, checking finances, developing product, social media stuff, all of that. So I did that. And so from 2011, you could say to 2015, I was involved uh, heavily with David and also Parker.com came along. So then I'm running Parker.com and it was building into something very, very cool. We built a, a pro team with people like Shade, people like Charles Brunette from France, um, a whole slew of athletes from around the, the world. They became a part of kind of the Parker.com pro team that we used to build that. So all this needs to say is that that kind of brings us to say all those, those other things is what I realized is that when I started Take Flight, there wasn't much of a community. It was very, very dispersed. In my business plan, it was a, how do we address a geographically diverse market? It sounds like now you have some cities that, and we'd have it through, through gyms. We have gyms that can, that can support themselves. You don't have a geographically dispersed market. You have enough people in one city to support a gym. Take flight wasn't, you know, Parker wasn't that way in 2007, 2008. It was all, it was all dispersed. So I started uh, take flight in that geographically dispersed market. And the vision was, how do we create a brand? that resonates with people in every country. And uh, the answer was not go to gyms, not go to events. The answer was sponsor and support the biggest pros in the world, make the best gear in the world and make sure they all have it. So Take Flight grew out of this 
you could say it needed to be an internet strategy, I think, in the beginning. And maybe there's some argument that it could have been different. But in the United States, I think it needed to be an internet strategy. And then furthermore, when Parker.com, or not when Parker.com, when Parker started to develop where it had more of a community, I'm doing stuff in France, working with David. And I'm like, dude, this company is doing its thing. Like it's found this velocity. It found this energy. We were doing crazy sales through 2015, like just bonkers sales. We were about to break through and do some really cool, really deep community stuff. And I'm like, this system is working. In 2016, we were going to take all the biggest pros in the world or all the biggest pros from the parkour team, people at the time, Oscar Sanchez, obviously the guys from France, but our pros from Mexico, from Canada, from the United States, from Spain, from Russia, from the UK, working with Toby Seeger in 2014, Will Sutton. We had this crazy team. We were going to take all the pros and fly them to lease, spend two weeks in lease shooting this crazy, crazy project. That was the vision, right? 2015 happens, and instead of growing 30%, like we had done every year before that, we flat, uh, we flatlined, or not flatlined, we just we just capped, and then next year we decreased 30%. So all of a sudden now what happened is we were, I think we were ready to break through and have this really deep involved community vision, and then finances just went chunk. So now I'm like, holy crap, I have to actually cut members from the pro team and cancel their contracts or the company's going to go bankrupt. So all of a sudden, this thing happened, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, life propagates. And then from 2016 to, you know, 2015 to 2018, I was like, just trying to make the company survive while developing more shoes, while trying to s- save relationships. And as you pointed to, there was so much negativity around in flight from a lot of these people on the fringe, a lot of people from England, right, frankly, who I despise to this day, who would, who would post hit pieces and speak bad about us and pros wouldn't respond to our like i'm rambling but this is interesting history so i think it was in 2013 or something i sat down and i wrote the top i think 50 or maybe top 100 pros in the world like by following count like all the best known people in the poker world i wrote them an email and i said hey we're building an endorsement team we have endorsement contracts with financial contracts are you interested in being a part of our team uh, can we open the discussion and I had pros that, that wouldn't even respond to us. And I, to this day, I don't know why, but I suspect a lot of it was because there was this really deep negativity around Take Flight, which goes back to maybe how I built the company. But a lot of it goes back to these internet trolls and this community. And what I've learned in life is that it doesn't, you don't need 90% of people against you. You just need like 3% of people who are really vocal about it and really vicious. And they can turn your brand to toxicity. We see this online and social media on the news channels. All of a sudden, you just talk bad about this person. They're a womanizer. They're a pedophile. They're a, a criminal. They they abuse their their first wife, whatever it may be. And all of a sudden, sponsors drop you. People won't talk to you. Nobody works with you, even if it's not true. Even if it's just a rumor that someone said. And a month later, someone's like, "Oh yeah, that rumor wasn't true. He uh, that never happened." Doesn't matter. You're branded. And so Take Flight, I think, got on this, on this negative side that when we were ready to deeply involve in the community, two things happened. Number one, people wouldn't talk to us. Number two, finances started to drop. And that became this vicious cycle of, do I even want to keep running Take Flight? Like, I poured my heart and soul in my own way for six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years into this company. And all I got was massive hate. Not making any money, getting massive hate. People won't talk to me. Toby Seeger, who I adore, he just got up and left, left our contract. Pasha Putkins, we're working with him. One day, he just never writes me back. I've never talked to him since. I was sending him money. One day, he just went through, wins the art of motion, never talks to me again. Uh, people like Sean Wood, who I adore, obviously leaves, feels like he can do better, starts a competing company. Like, a bunch of our pros went and started their own competing brands. So it's like, all of a sudden, it was like, whoa, like, lots of negativity no money, no love. I've never talked bad about anyone in the community, but everyone's talking shit about me. And I'm like, do I even want to be a part of this anymore? And so anyway, all this is to say, like a lot of interesting things to say. For me, it was never as easy as, oh yeah, just go to an event, give people free t-shirts. It was never that easy, either because it wasn't possible at the time, because my interests were dispersed, 100% my fault, uh, because there was negative publicity that I couldn't figure out how to get around. Or just maybe I wasn't wise enough and smart enough, which is definitely a part of it too.